good afternoon. Oh, hello, yes. Um, I'm on the JW.org site. Um, find a meeting, and this, this number was under find a meeting. <clears throat> okay, fine, fine. Hi. <laughs> that. So, so, where are you? Um, I'm to the south of you, but it's difficult to find um, a number where I can actually speak to a person. I'm glad I found you. <laughs> right. right. Um, I'm reading your book, Enjoy Life Forever. Okay, that's good. I'm rather stuck on lesson 54. I haven't read all of the lessons. I've just been picking out what I found most interesting. But lesson 54, the role of the faithful and discreet slave is rather interesting um, the summary on page 228 says the governing body is the faithful and discreet slave appointed by christ it gives direction and spiritual food to christians world earth wide just say, say the page number again because i'm I, yes. I wasn't quick enough to turn it up that's all right page 228 the summary okay yeah i've, 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 I've I've got it in front of me. Um, yeah. Spiritual food. What would what would that be? <clears throat> um, just tell me your name. Yeah, my name is Roberts. Roberts. Robert. Robert Skinner. Robert Skinner. Okay. Uh, that name sounds sort of vaguely familiar. I'm David, by the way. David. And where are you? Where are you, Robert? I'm to, I'm to the south of you. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of country to the south. Yes, there is. Um, anyway, Anyway, um, when, it, when it speaks about spiritual food, I mean, basically, that's our way of saying um, stuff that uh, information, guidance from the Bible, etc., that we, uh, we feed on, that we take into ourselves in a spiritual sense, just like the body would take in literal food. So essentially... We'd say you know, the primary source of spiritual food is the Bible, mm -hmm. and then some of that is, if you like, dished up. It is prepared and presented through things such as the book that you've been reading. Right. Um, Did you read it on the on the website, or have you got a physical copy? Um, well, both. I actually got a physical copy recently. Um, it was posted to me, um, but I I've been reading mostly off off an internet copy that I downloaded. Right, OK, I understand. Um, it says the governing body is the faithful and discreet slave appointed by Christ. But I found out that the governing body only came into existence in 1971. You didn't have a governing body before 1971. Well, I think I think that would be more a matter of terminology than actuality, because um, essentially, if we go back into uh, the early Christian times, if you when you read the book of Acts, there was clearly a group of people, and I don't, I don't know that the term governing body was used, but... Um, it wasn't. They, it's they, never used they, in the Bible. It's no, never used anywhere in the yeah. Bible. There's no, there's no passage of Acts 15 in the Greek text that uses the term governing body. No, you can, no, you can read it into the text, but it's not there in the original yeah. Greek, Greek so, no, text. The word governing saying, body applies to a legal legal representative that runs over a corporation, that administers a, a corporation. In the case of the Watchtower, the Watchtower is a not-for-profit corporation. Administered, it's owned by shareholders, but it's administered by the governing body. That, that, that administration where I found out that Nathan Homer Nor was stripped of, stripped of his powers as president in 1971, and those powers were given to a governing body. That happened in 1971. But your book and your literature seems to give the impression that there's always been a governing body. That's what I find difficult. Yeah, uh, well, personally, I, that, I, I, I believe that there has been a governing body, though, we, though the terminology was not used and the... And, there, there is a differentiation between um, <clears throat> legal entities, because clearly there weren't any, sorry, sorry, anyway, any legal entities in the um, in the first century. But there were what I would call brothers who carry who who clearly carried out that sort of role. As there you were apostles, you, yes, yes. 
There, there were apostles in the first century and they died yeah. out at the end of the first century. But there were certainly apostles who were guiding the work. I have no problem with that. Um, yeah. I, I went on to JW.org to the Watchtower for the 15th of July 2013. Uh, there's a box at the top of the page, page 22, which says, did you get the point? And it kind of sums up your teachings. And it says on the left hand side that the governing body make up the faithful and discreet slave. Now, this teaching I found out has only been current for about nine or ten years. Possibly yes. this came in in 2012, but it's certainly clearly identified in this Watchtower, July yes. the 15th, 2013, page 22. It says on the left hand side, the faithful and discreet slave a small group of anointed brothers who are directly involved in preparing and dispensing spiritual food during Christ's presence. Today, these anointed brothers make up the governing body. Yeah. So it's, it says that the faithful and discreet slave is the governing body. But I yeah. found out that you used to have, you've had about 10 different positions on who the faithful and discreet slave is. Um, you used to teach at one time that all of the anointed Jehovah's Witnesses were the faithful and discreet slave. That's the Watchtower for the 1st of March, 1981, page 24. Yeah, and, cool. and then before that, I've got a first edition copy of the Finnish Mystery published in 1917. Now, this was changed in later editions, but my 1917 edition on page 5 says that Pastor Russell occupied the office of the faithful and discreet slave. So I found out that for 10 years, from 1917 to 1927, the position of the Bible students was that one man, Pastor Russell, was the faithful and discreet slave. And it even says on page 144 that after his death, um, which it calls going beyond the veil, meaning after his death, Pastor Russell was still administering every aspect of the kingdom work. He's still administering the Watchtower Society from beyond the grave, in other words, which I found rather strange. I, I, you, you have the advantage of me. I, I, I've, not, I've never had a copy of the Finnish Mystery, so I, yeah. I haven't uh, abs absorbed that level of detail. There were quite a few watchtowers at the time, which also said that Pastor Russell was the faithful and discreet slave. They taught that from 1917 to 1927. But when I go back to that 2013 watchtower, 15th of July, page 22, in the middle column, it says appointed over his domestics. And it says something that I feel is rather dishonest. It says, quote, in 1919, Jesus selected capable anointed brothers to be his faithful and discreet slave. Now, that statement, I don't feel is honest because the people who wrote this watchtower would have known, firstly, the governing body, brothers, plural, came into existence in 1971. And it says on the left hand side that the governing body are anointed brothers, plural, and that they, they and they alone are the faithful and discreet slave. But secondly, it says in 1919, Jesus selected capable anointed brothers to be his faithful and discreet slave. Now, they would know that that is a lie, flat out lie, because they would have known in 1919, they taught that Pastor Russell alone was the faithful and discreet slave, not a group of anointed brothers called governing body. Yeah, OK. So just tell me, um, obviously, you, it, it, this is something that you have devoted quite a lot of time and Yes. Attention to. Um, so, do you do you personally have a view about what constitutes the? I'll use the term governing body or the those having oversight of the Christian congregation and such things as that yourself. Oh, I'm I'm not a Jehovah's Witness. I've never been one. I have no, no. commitment to your belief. I I don't believe that the two watchtower corporations the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania or the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York have any connection to the Bible or to Christ or to Christianity in any way whatsoever. They're just money-making American corporations, which I have nothing, nothing to do with. And there is no office of faithful and wise servant. Um, Matthew 24, 45 is just talking about a parable. 
it contrasts a faithful servant who's waiting for his master's return with, in verse 48, an evil servant who's not awaiting his master's return. Because if you look early on in Matthew 24, Jesus tells us about the destruction of the temple and the sign of the destruction of the temple. And he tells us about the end of the age, his, his second coming, and the sign of the second coming. And then he basically just tells people to be attentive, to be about his to be about their master's business waiting for christ's return so in matthew 24 well, you're, you're you're obviously somebody who who reads and values the bible are you robert affiliated with any group of people or are you uh, essentially a, m a man on your own no i'm just a man on my own i'm not connected to any religious right, group at okay. all I used to be an evangelical Christian, but I, I saw through the fact that many people in the evangelical faith don't believe their own, or they don't practice their own teachings, and I wanted nothing more to do with it. Right, I see, I see. So what, 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 what branch of evangelical Christianity? Well, this, I, 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 I left from... over 10 years ago. Yeah. yeah, because there seemed to me so, so many different versions of it. Oh, you had difficulty sort of... Um, differentiating between them at times yeah yeah i yeah. left in about 2010 right okay uh, and so now um your your particular your particular interest in the sort of analysis you've just uh presented to me is is what where where is there a particular reason why you've um, studied things to do with Jehovah's Witnesses and their beliefs, maybe rather than oh, the exclusive brethren or oh, I've spoken to no, or no, something no, like that? No, 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 I've spoken to the exclusive brethren. I've had, I've had several attempted discussions with them. They always run away. But I think I've had three or four attempted discussions with the exclusive brethren. Um... I tried speaking to Christadelphians. They're difficult also. They tend to run away. Um, I've spoken to a whole range of different groups. One of the last groups I spoke to was Iglesia Ni Christu. Um, they Sorry, say that again? Iglesia Ni Christu. They're a oh, Philippines-based Unitarian sect. And um, okay. I spoke to them yesterday, in fact, and um, the person just hung up on me. Right. Well, I, I, uh, I don't think I've ever had, I've really hardly ever had the opportunity to talk to somebody who's exclusive brethren because they chose not to do so. And I, I don't think I've ever encountered a Unitarian, although I have seen one of their churches, um, uh, I think it was in Warwick or somewhere like that. But um, beyond that, no, I have no no contact. But so you, I don't just speak to Jehovah's Witnesses. I speak to different no. groups. Okay. And I find all of these groups are all exactly the same. The same thing with most evangelical Christians. They yeah, have, they have they're not... Exactly they're the all exactly the same. They have not studied the Bible in any substantial depth. They, have not, they don't even understand their own beliefs. They don't understand other people's beliefs. And usually when you speak to these people, they just run away. They do what I call a runner. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, uh, let me just touch on a couple of things that you've spoken about or one you've spoken about, one you haven't. Um, you mentioned the idea of uh, money making. I s struggle with hearing you say that because... I see personally the sacrifices made by individual Jehovah's Witnesses, not just in the local congregation, but globally. Uh, and I include within that people who work in our national or international headquarters. And I really struggle to see uh, the idea that someone somewhere is... Uh, coming out prospering as a result of their activity um, as Jehovah's Witnesses. I think that the Watchtower is losing money now 
at an alarming rate. But in the past, the beneficiaries have been the shareholders, the people who own stock in the Watchtower Corporation. That's why you're called a publisher. You're called a publisher if you go door to door because you're working for a publishing company that prints books. Although, of course, as we both know, that's that's in the middle of a change. You're going to electronic media. I believe at the present time, having sold your um, <clears throat> property in Brooklyn, you're currently building a one billion dollar Hollywood level studio and size in upper New York state. You're building another facility in Australia and I think a third facility is it in Europe I don't know where the third facility is so you're building three massive um, film production well, units well, certainly you yeah, developing the ability to use things like video much more extensively because that's an effective way of conveying information to people so that's where the book that you've got when you look at it in its electronic version has got video embedded in it but we're also spending yeah, huge amounts of money on things like uh, caring for people whose lives have been smashed to smithereens by disasters, whether it's by war or other conflicts or mudslides or typhoons or tornadoes I think, and that sort of thing. I think, no, I think most of the money is going on buildings. No, I buildings, utterly, utterly Especially I, the I media centres. The, the I'm three sorry, media centers. I'm sorry, you're, you're deeply offending me by that because within my own family, my family members have, have sacrificed time and their own personal money. I've done the same to bring relief to people in such distress. And the idea that yeah, somewhere secretly uh, the, the stuff is just being stashed away really you're hurting me personally by saying that, not just saying something that theologically I disagree with. I don't wish to give offence to you, sir, um, but you. it is a fact that the Watchtower is building three media centres. Oh, One in no, Upper I, New York I State that's costing about a billion you. dollars. Not a million, a billion. On, on the fact that those things are being done. Yeah. Um, so that's where but, most of the money is going. I can assure you the Watchtower is not spending two or three billion dollars on disaster, on disaster relief. They might well be spending a few million dollars on disaster relief, but the vast majority of money as a percentage, yeah. way, way, way over 80, maybe even over 90 percent of all the expenditure is going on buildings and these media centers, as I say, the one in New York State alone is going to cost one billion dollars, not a million, a billion with a B, one thousand million dollars. Yeah, well, I, I, I have not, that's not a figure I've seen anywhere myself. And uh, when, when you talk about places being built, you have to remember that uh, the work done to construct, whether it's a Kingdom Hall or a, uh, some sort of operational facility, is done almost entirely voluntarily. That's what I've done personally. That's what members of my family have done. Um, so, so the idea that, uh, that that somewhere monumental sums of money are being spent. They may, may, if, if I take something that I've been involved with, which is building a kingdom hall, somebody might say, well, that had a value of a million pounds. Yeah, it didn't cost a million pounds. I know exactly what it cost, and I know what effort, human effort, was put in. So it might have created that sort of value, but it didn't cost that sort of money. Um, now, well, as it uh, happens... Uh, uh, as it happens, uh, somebody who has, uh, that I've been referring to who's been involved in the sort of disaster relief that I've spoken about has just been calling me uh, while I've been talking okay. to you. So I've, I've told them I'll call them back, but yes. I could do with speaking to them. Could, um, could I briefly ask you, could you please show me from Revelation chapter 11, this 1919 date, how do you get from 1914 to 1919? Because you claim... 
in this Watchtower article that I quoted, 15th of, 15th of July 2013, page 22 at the top of the page, in 1919, Jesus selected capable anointed brothers to be his faithful and discreet slave. Well, that's not accurate. It was, in fact, the claim at the time was that Pastor Russell was the faithful and discreet slave. Could you prove this 1919 date to me, please? Probably not to your satisfaction, no, by the sound of it, because you're, you're saying that something that was said in uh, 19, I don't know what, what date, 27 or 17, uh, is, is no longer held to be true. And uh, I, I think we're, we're not saying to you that that was the view that was held at that time. No, that no, what, that what that do you believe today about 1919? There has been a change. In Revelation, it's grand climax at hand in the 1980s, okay. 1988 you taught that 1919 was calculated from the 1918 date, right? Today, there's been an adjustment. That Watchtower article, I forget where in the large Watchtower article, the 15th of July 2013, it says the calculation for 1919 now starts in October 1914, not in 1918. How do you calculate the 1919 date? I, I'm not going to attempt to answer that off the top of my head because it's not something that looms enormously large in my thinking. Uh, so forgive me that I right. I am I'm not going to attempt to do that now uh, because I am distracted by the need to also respond. To okay, this all right. Well, I've taken enough of your time. Thank you very much for your time, sir. I, I, I thank you for your time. <laughs> thank you. Bye, bye, sir. Bye, bye, bye.